Art is a powerful force. It makes aggressors shake and it holds the powerful to account. In 1937, the small town of Guernica was bombed. 1,700 innocent villagers were killed and maimed. The artist, Pablo Picasso, heard of accounts like this. A sight that haunted me for weeks was the charred bodies of women and children, several of them huddled together in what had been the cellar of a house. The air was alive with the cries of the wounded. I saw a man crawling down the street, dragging his broken legs. Pieces of people and animal were lying everywhere. In the wreckage, there was a young woman. I could not take my eyes off of her. Bones stuck through her dress, her head twisted right around her neck. She lay, mouth open, her tongue hanging out. I vomited and lost consciousness. So what did Picasso do? He created one of the greatest artworks of all time. Guernica is a 25 by 12 foot painting portraying the hellish suffering of human animals and bodies, twisted, tormented, contorted, dismembered and burning in the flames. But who cares? I mean, isn't it just a gray painting? Well, yeah, a gray painting that scares people. In fact, a little over 10 years ago, it scared one of the most powerful men on the planet. At the time, US Secretary of State Colin Powell was about to give a speech promoting the war in Iraq at the United Nations, and the backdrop behind him would be a big reproduction of Guernica. Fortunately for him, some people on his team realized that this would be a big problem. Unfortunately, their solution to this was rather comical, which was to cover it up with blue cloth. So it went like this. They silenced the painting for a moment, but ultimately, the painting won. I'm an artist in California, the CEO of Drew Kataoka Studios, an art studio based in Silicon Valley, but with a global footprint. We create for clients and collectors in over 30 countries. And for us, the works of Picasso, the works of the great artists of the Renaissance are an inspiration. Art can and should be a force for good. Over the summer, I was horrified by the footage of the brutal murder of George Floyd and so much police brutality on television. I had nightmares and one morning I woke up with an image of the American flag, its heavy cloth rippling, animated with the whispered breaths of those brutally murdered. I texted my friend, Reverend Bernice King, the daughter of Martin Luther King Jr. And I asked her, what do you think about an online protest for those people who want to go out and show their support and protest, but can't because of distance or health restrictions? She texted me back in 12 minutes and 72 hours later, we had begun. So we organized seven days of online protest in collaboration with the King Center in Atlanta. I created a digital artwork based on that dream that I had had, and it became the poster for online protest. Participants included thousands of men and women and young people on the East Coast, the West Coast, across the country, really around the world, but also celebrities like Steve Harvey and Alyssa Milano and Ben Stiller and stars from the NFL and black faith leaders and CEOs, um, friends of mine, Chelsea Clinton and Wynton Marsalis joined on board and The Tonight Show and Ellen DeGeneres and The Ellen Show featured online protest, shared the message through the medium of television and social media, spreading it to millions. But most importantly, petitions were signed thousands of calls to politicians were made. Now, there are so many goals that we have and we haven't yet accomplished all of them, but sometimes change is a process. A very different genre of work that we create at Drew Kata Oka Studios are 
our ambrosias. The ambrosias are multidimensional reflective sculptures that are like living organisms, constantly changing, complex and filled with visual loops. They never look the same, and it is even hard to retake the same photo. But I'm proud that these artworks have also been a platform to amplify ideas around globalization, the sustainable development goals, women's rights, the environment, racial identity, gay rights, and creativity. We have some big problems looming on the horizon. So let's not forget, we have something essential in our arsenal that we must make use of. Art is a powerful force for good.